Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about this Wax library. Now, before going ahead with respect to this particular video, guys, I want to announce iNeuron is actually starting a new batch on June 6th uh, with respect to machine learning and deep learning. They're also going to cover PySpark and Spark. Um, along with that, they're also providing you internships. So it is basically a five months plus three months program. Five months is basically the course. Three months is basically the internship opportunity that you will be getting. So please make sure that you join that particular course because it is completely affordable, guys. For eight months, you know, you just have to pay 3,540 rupees INR because they have already started a lot of community things. And probably in the future, again, we are going to collaborate and start more community like statistics and other courses like big data and all. So please do support them. Uh, they are working really, really well. Uh, I think we all should support iNeuron as a team because they are working really really hard so this is an amazing library which will actually help you to explore huge data set to analyze huge data set you know uh, and it is pretty much similar to pandas so if you have actually worked with pandas one of the disadvantage with respect to pandas are right it is pretty much slow right and if you have a huge data at that time it may take a lot of time to actually uh, you know to execute some of the programs over there with respect to the pandas library so considering this we'll try to discuss about wax this wax library is very very helpful you know and there is also one dask library also and probably in my next video i'll be also uploading a video regarding that and then we'll try to compare dask and wax okay so both this particular libraries will try to compare but remember both those libraries will be actually helpful for you to work with big tabular data set so what is wax so wax is a high performance python library for lazy out of core data frames similar to pandas to visualize and explore big tabular data set it calculates statistics such as mean sum count standard deviation etc on n dimensional grid for more than billion sample per rows per second so this is a huge data guys visualization is done using histogram density plots 3d volume rendering allow, allowing interactive exploration of big data wax uses memory uh, mapping zero memory copy policy and lazy computation so this is pretty much important lazy computation it is a technique which is already being implemented in c sharp to make it faster you know so it everything will not get loaded then and then only when you're calling and some internal functions then only that particular values will be actually loaded so uh, lazy computation is one of the techniques and white is basically getting used for best performance so no memory is wasted so what i'm going to do is that first of all let us create some huge data set and first of all go, before going that guys we have to install this so go to your anaconda prompt uh, and then i'm just going to activate uh, my environment which i'm actually working on and in order to install it you just go and see what is the command so i am inside this pi pipi.org inside that wax you can see that the command that is used is basically pip install wax so i'm just going to write pip install w v a e x so i'm just going to execute it i've already installed it guys so it is already showing you requirement already satisfied but if you did not install it please make sure that you use this command and automatically it will get installed so this is done then what i'm going to do is that we will try to create a huge data set you know over here just imagine how many uh, rows are here so one stands hundred thousand ten thousand lakh ten lakhs so i'm just going to consider 10 lakh uh, you know records and what i'm going to do is that so this is basically somewhere around 1 million records and number of features that i'm going to take is 50 and here i have imported wax i have imported pandas i have imported numpy okay now inside this i'm creating a data set where i'm saying that pd.dataframe and here i've written np.random.randint i'm saying that you have to initialize values between 0 to 100 how much we have actually given the size over here the size is basically number of rows and number of columns so that basically means we are taking 1 million records and 500 columns and randomly all the numbers will be initialized between 0 to 100 okay and apart from that i've also said that okay you also have to give a column name and this is the for loops like i'm saying that for i in range in number of columns so whatever number of columns it is coming over there right over here i've taken 500 columns so it will be ranging from one one to 500 or zero to 499 okay 
then I'm saying that put the column name as column that particular number. So for the zeroth iteration in the zeroth column, this value will be zero, right? So as soon as I execute this, guys, you'll be able to see that we will be creating this data set and probably this is having 1 million records, okay? And it is having 500 features. Now, this is a huge data set, you know? And initially, I've actually created this in the form of data frame, okay? Now, if I try to do any kind of pre-processing in this, guys, it is going to take a whole lot of time. Just try it by yourself, your kernel, Will be getting stuck your your jupyter node will, will be hanged you know completely so don't do any kind of pre-processing but i'll just show you how i can actually use this uh considering wax as my library how i'll be able to you know perform much more better than pandas perform some kind of analysis and say that how it performs much more better than pandas itself so uh considering the data set i want to see that how much memory it is going to use so you can write tf.info memory underscore usage is equal to uh, is equal to deep okay and remember guys all the references has been taken over here from here you can see everything over here so you can actually check it out and you can basically execute all these things right so df.info memory usage is equal to deep if i do this you'll be able to see that the memory usage is somewhere around 1.9 gb so that that is a huge size you know uh, and suppose if you're having some less ram somewhere around 4 gb probably this will probably take a lot of time to actually store or create this particular data frame, right? Now, the next step what I'm doing is that whatever the data set is actually created, I am actually going to create my CSV file. So I'm saying that whatever data frame is there, I'm just convert that into a CSV file and file underscore path index is equal to false, okay? So when I do this, automatically the CSV file will be getting created. And remember the size will be somewhere around this. I have already executed this, guys. If you have somewhere around 8 GB RAM or 4 GB RAM, it will probably take, uh, and it depends on your system, guys, uh, how fast it will be able to create this CSV file because understand it depends on the number of records that I'm actually using. And I have a powerful system. It hardly took me within 30 seconds to execute this particular code. And if I go and show you in this particular path, you'll be able to see my final day underscore data dot CSV file that is already been created. Okay. So, uh, that is created. Now remember, if I want to use this particular library, what I have to do is that I always try to, I will try to convert this CSV file into an HDFI file. Now what is this HDFI file? Let me just go over here guys, HDFI file, okay? So I'm just going to search this in Wikipedia. It says that hierarchical data format is a set of file formats to design to store and organize large amount of data. Now, when I convert that into an HDFI file, it will be formatted and stored. The data will be formatted and stored in a, such a way that it will be easily be, will be able to extract it, will be able to analyze it, will be able to apply different kinds of operations. So this particular library, when I'm talking about this library that we are going to use, right? We have to make sure that we convert this CSV file into an HDFI file. Now, in order to create it, I have a function which is called as from underscore CSV. You can see over here, I'll press shift tab. Here it says that from underscore CSV, you can see everything. Read a CSV file as data frame and optionally convert to an HDFI file. Pretty much simple, right? So the first parameter is basically my file path. Uh, it is nothing but final underscore data dot CSV. I'm saying convert is equal to true and I'm going to say chunk size. Now, when you give this, when you execute it, it will probably take again some more time and you'll be able to see that the final data dot CSV will get converted into final underscore data dot CSV dot HDF file. Okay. So this is the format that is always required where, when you're using wax. So make sure that, and remember guys, when you're working in AWS, when you're working with some kind of big data, you know, in AWS also, there is something called as S3 bucket. All those HDF five file will actually get stored in the S3 bucket. And you can call that S3, S3, uh, that particular file from the S3 bucket, and you can actually retrieve it over here. Now see this, uh, as I, soon as I see that, what is the type of this? Then it is basically saying that it is HDFI memory map. Now let's read that HDFI file uh, using this VAX library. So what I have to do is I have to just use this wax.open final underscore data dot CSV dot HDFI. This is the file name. So as soon as I execute this and remember, as soon as I say w, uh, this dot head, you can see that I'll execute this in front of you how fast now it will get executed. Remember, if I make this final underscore data dot CSV and try to read it with the help of pandas, it will take a whole lot of time. 
Now, remember, if I use dot head, it actually shows me the top 10 records. Now you can see that how quickly it is happening, right? And remember, if I see the type of wax underscore df, right? Wax underscore df, right? Let me just see the type. It is basically saying that it is HDF5 memory map. Perfect. Now this is the head. Head basically shows the shows, uh, first 10 records. Now let's see some of the expression system, some of the mathematical functions I'll try to apply over here. How quickly it will be doing. And remember guys, we have 1 million records. That's a huge, huge size, right? So considering this, let's see uh, how does the expression system work. Don't waste memory or time with feature engineering. We lazily transform your data when needed. So this is what Wax does. Okay, it uses lazy, uh, lazy techniques to transform your data whenever it is required. Now, in this particular operation, remember the whole data set is present over here, and inside this you have columns like column zero, column one, two, three, four, like that, right? And suppose I'm creating a division column, and it says that uh, this one three basically spec uh, specifies that column one is getting divided by column three. Okay. So when, when I do this particular division, you'll be able to see that how quickly it has happened, right? And if I execute and show you this, this is, this is how quickly, if, if I try to see the operations of the time, let, let me just see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a time uh, library over here and let me just execute it. You can see 251 milliseconds to actually do this computation when you have 1 million records. That is amazing, right? So if I just go and see this, Quickly, it is also displaying things, right? This is one of the property which is called as expression system. There is something called as out of core data frame, right? We can actually do filtering, we can evaluate expression. And this is just not with respect to division, guys. You can do multiplication, you can do different kind of operations as you want. Let me just try multiplication over here. And I'm just going to say that, okay, this is my column of multiplication, okay? So if I execute this, let's see. Zero nanoseconds, amazing, right? Now, if I try to see this particular column, see this, this is how it is very, very fast, okay? So you can try different, different operations, definitely. Uh, okay, the second thing is out of core data frame. Here we can do filtering, evaluating every uh, expressions, and this will not ma make, or it will not, basically it will not make any memories. So you can see that, what it is saying over here, filtering and evaluating expression will not waste memory by making copies. So the data copies is not made over here. Okay. I'll just show you what kind of operation I'm talking about. The data is kept untouched on disk and will be streamed only when needed. Delay the time before you need a cluster. Okay. Now let's see an example. Okay? Let's see an, a quick an example. Okay. What over here, what I'm doing is that I'll just execute in the different. Uh, okay. So. I'm just saying that inside this particular data frame, inside the column two, wherever, okay, so I have my column two, I just want all the records which is having greater than 70 value, okay? So that is what I'm actually doing over here as a filter operation. So that is what whole this whole expression basically means. Now, if I try to execute this, see how quickly it happens, okay? Hardly it will be taking less time and all the records are there. You can see that 289472 records are greater than 70, in column two, right? So it is actually displaying all the records, but it is very fast. If you try to do this with the help of data frames, trust me, it is going to take a huge amount of time. Okay. So make sure that you actually note this down, you know, how beautiful it is. So let me just say, and why it is not taking much time because here it will not make a memory copy. Whereas in pandas, when you're using pandas, it makes an extra copy. Okay. So I'm just going to execute this. Okay. Then there are a lot of inbuilt functions uh, inside this, you know, when I'm making this particular condition after filtering, you know, you have mean, you have median, anything you have, right? Now, suppose I want to find out the column two, mean, mean, median, anything, right? So over here, I'm just going to make this progress. It's called widget so that it will tell us that how much seconds it will take in order to execute this particular code. So once I execute this, you'll be able to see that, okay, it is just taken 1.01 seconds, right? It is amazing, right? And here is the mean value. Let me just see with respect to other values that I have. Okay, suppose if I say median. Okay, now we are, we are executing with respect to median. Let's see how much time it will take. Okay, it, it does not, okay, sorry. The method name I have written in a wrong way. Okay, okay, expression object has no attribute median. It's okay. Uh, let's see some other parameters. 
mean median drop so we have various okay minimum value okay just let's let's check this minimum value now here you can see 71 definitely like how fast it is happening right now suppose if i want to find out the max value quickly it is happening very very quickly and let me just see with respect to some other things like mean min max let me just see mean max so you can see the minimum number is this maximum number is this and remember guys this is happening this this query is happening from this many records so it is happening very very quickly right so this is amazing now this was with respect to out of core data frame remember here no copies of the data is actually happening even the data is just getting referred we are just using it and we are able to execute it very very quickly try to just do with data frames with the help of pandas guys it will probably take so much of time okay now with respect to fast group by aggregation now let's see what is this so here we are actually doing some group by operation group by operation with the help of column one okay and then i'm put saying that i'm also going to use an aggregation function of mean on column three okay so as soon as i execute this we'll just see this how fast it will happen i've also used the time variable so 119 uh sorry yeah 44 milliseconds right 44 milliseconds let me just try with some other column so that it will show whether I'm correct or not. Yes, it is taking 39.6 milliseconds, right? It is pretty much fast. Here, with respect to column one, I'm aggregating and I'm finding out the mean. Okay, with this value, what is the mean? Like how many numbers is having 63, right? So that all values with respect to column four, I'm going to uh, take and I'm going to find out the mean. That is what this group by operation is that. Now you can understand guys, in data frames also we do this, right? We do this and you know that if you have worked in data frame, it probably takes a lot of time, right? Now, similarly, if I go and see over here, over here, I've written group by on this particular column one. And I'm just saying that with respect to column one, I just want to find out the count, which is just an aggregate function, right? Now, if I try to execute it, you can see that 25.1 milliseconds, 63 number is present this many number of times in column one, 33 number is present this many number of times, 48 number is present this many number of times. And like this, all the information are there. Now, what do you learn by this, guys? What do you learn by this is that wax library is pretty much important when you have a huge data set you know not only these guys they are also join operations if you want to really explore more right what you do is that uh, let me just show you what you do is that just go to this particular website right there is a lot of examples they have said you that from where you can take the data of big uh, big google query sorry big big query itself so you have something called as new york taxi data set it is somewhere around 113 gb data set i guess so here you will be able to find out all the data sets which you can actually explore you know new uh, like here you have big query apis here you can find out all the data set which you want to actually explore trust me this is an amazing library with respect to the learning and one thing you have learned just try to do this and try to see this here see you can see that it is taken an example of s3 bucket also in aws it is reading directly from the s3 and you know that in s3 you can put any kind of data format right so it is pretty much amazing you can see all the type of expression system out of core fast group or aggregation you can see fast and efficient join wax does not copy or materialize the right table when joining saving gigabytes of memory so with sub seconds of joining on a billion rows it is pretty much fast so this is an amazing thing guys just try to explore this Again, all this particular code will be given in the GitHub and the link will be given in the description. And make sure that uh, when you are doing, you execute from start because I'm not going to give you this CSV file which I actually created for 1 million records because the size will be pretty much huge. But just execute it, it will probably take some amount of time for you to execute also. Okay. So, yes, this was all about this particular video. I hope you like it. Please do subscribe my channel if you have not already subscribed. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you, one and all. Bye bye.